being a teen day, um, violence um, prevention month and awareness month, this next part of our agenda goes completely um, in concert with what we just discussed. Uh, we mm -hmm. talked about technology and how useful and how attached we are to it every single moment of the day, but I think we also recognize that with advancements in technology, we need to also uh, create some uh, updates to our laws that could better protect uh, people from using technology as a weapon and we should also um, capture uh, the uh, the essence of what is what is normal and acceptable as behavior so we're trying to launch a campaign to uh, engage youth in a conversation about what is acceptable behavior and to try to make these corrections this legislation that we are going to file today refile today goes directly in concert with this public awareness campaign. I want to recognize my colleague, uh, Jeffrey Roy, who's joined us. Uh, back in April of 2017, uh, we filed uh, for the first time an act relative to harmful distribution of sexually explicit visual materials. And Representative Roy also filed a bill uh, uh, talking about and correcting uh, laws pertaining to this subject, uh, emanating from uh, a matter in his district in Franklin, which he'll speak about uh, after I just summarize the bill. Uh, as many of you know, the legislative process is a, a challenging one, but it's also an opportunity to highlight uh, an area of concern and come up with solutions. And then you have the process of debating it, discussing, and bringing in uh, the, the stakeholders in the engagement in order to get the legislation passed. It's a very difficult task. Um, so we were not successful last term, but we got close um, in having the bill passed. Uh, so we wanted to refile it. And uh, the conversation that we just had today, I think, is like sort of exhibit A as to why we need to update uh, the, the laws uh, to address the movement of images that could be used to harm harm someone. Um, I also just did a quick Google search last night and just came up with multiple articles, and every one of them is of great concern to all of us. Um, in Easton, um, a mother of a 15-year-old daughter said, quote, unquote, trading nude images uh, was like trading baseball cards. Uh, the superintendent uh, talked about uh, let's be real, this is happening in every school. The question is, are we going to deal with it or pretend that it doesn't exist? Uh, in Brockton, you had a, a field hockey player mm -hmm. who missed 46 days of school, um, unknowingly was filmed by a teammate, and that film was posted on social media and caused her great <laughs> harm and stress, which led to the um, moving from that district to another school district. Uh, they talked about Snapchat, Snapchat games like show and cover leading to what's called mobbing. Uh, these may be terms familiar to you or not, but this is uh, apparently what is happening among this age group. Uh, the Boston Herald did an extensive piece um, in January around teen suicide talking about two high school students, uh, Anna and Connor, um, who were uh, the involved in issues like body shaming and cyber bully, bullying. In one uh, part of that article, it talked about receiving a 1,000 texts a day. So this is very real, and it is evident in all places of our Commonwealth, uh, no matter where the community is. And so it's our collective responsibility uh, to work hard uh, to, to work with our legislators and see that this bill uh, get passed uh, in this term. Um, so let me just highlight the three points, and then I'm going to ask uh, Jeff, Representative Roy to, to comment, as well as uh, D.A. Sullivan, uh, Deputy Secretary Qualey, and Chief Kais, and anyone else that would like to speak about this uh, bill. So the three major points of the bill, uh, first of all, start with this whole uh, preventative education and requiring school districts to update their cyberbullying uh, bylaws mm -hmm. in the school districts to incorporate uh, uh, the use of explicit images uh, to tease or intimidate other students and to be explicit in 
their uh, policies around uh, what is uh, what is acceptable or not and to be able to talk about that directly with students uh, and not only students but educators and parents I mean this would be a tool that could be used to, to bring it home the second part is to uh, give district attorneys more tools to work with because under current law the exchange of uh, an image uh, from one place to another, the sexual image, would be considered child pornography. Mm -hmm. And uh, unless that was actually what was happening, you would not want to prosecute uh, a minor uh, for child pornography. But what we'd like to do in this bill, if passed, is to give the district attorneys the tools um, and the discretion to discern what is appropriate uh, for that situation. So going back to that superintendent that said, Let's, let's, let's be real about this, this is happening, but we need, we need some consequences to talk about with students. The opportunities would be not to prosecute as a felony, uh, but to perhaps divert a student to an education program uh, and to help them formulate what is uh, the right choice and the right behavior. And that would be the presumption, um, if this law is passed, there would be a the presumptive disposition would be an education program. If the district attorney thinks it's more than that, then they would also have the tools to charge either a misdemeanor or something more. And we feel uh, that that's a really important uh, piece of the, the law that needs to be updated and corrected. The other is uh, this issue of revenge porn. And we clearly have a gap um, in our laws relative to that. So. We punish uh, for the non-consensual recording of a sexual explicit image. Uh, we punish for that. You can punish for that. But when it is recorded and distributed intentionally to harm someone's reputation or to um, bully them or force them into a situation that they uh, are not comfortable with, then, then it, it needs to be addressed. And that's why we feel uh, that this legislation would toughen penalties for adults who use that as, as a weapon and give the district attorneys the ability to charge it as a, either a misdemeanor or minor crime or a felony, um, whatever the circumstances di dictate. Uh, just as some facts to back this up as you're trying to educate uh, your legislators beyond who's here today about the importance of the passage of this law. While we are very progressive in this Commonwealth and proud that we are first in many areas, uh, 40 other states have laws in place to protect uh, from the distribution of sexually explicit images. So this is not a place where we're leading, and clearly we have the opportunity to do so. Uh, one other fact that I think is really important to think about, and it will be obvious to you, uh, the CDC states that 93% of youth ages 12 to 17 are online and 76% have broadband internet access at home. Uh, clearly, uh, youth are, are utilizing uh, internet wireless and communicating uh, like we do as adults. So time for correction. Uh, we are filing the bill today. That is the announcement. And uh, we will persist and uh, it's important that we uh, succeed in our effort to change these laws and better protect the people and our youth of our Commonwealth. Uh, with that, I just want to thank uh, Jeffrey Roy for um, his leadership and